In this video, we will show you how to assemble the Liebherr LR 1250 crawler crane fitted with main boom and luffing jib. Self-assembly system is the name of Liebherr's advanced design, which reduces loading and assembly work to a minimum. Please read the operating manual delivered with the machine prior to assembly and startup, or if you have further questions. Always make sure you wear the proper personal protective equipment, PPE. When working at dangerous heights, fall protection must always be used. Assembly begins with the startup of the basic machine. Then, the hand railings on the upper carriage which were folded down during transportation can be raised and secured. Depending on the machine setup, the exhaust pipe must be mounted. The operator's cab is swiveled to the side to save space during transportation. For assembly, bring the cab into its working position and manually secure it with pins. To turn on the electric power of the machine, switch on the battery disconnect. It is located in the upper carriage behind the cab. Before startup, please always check the motor oil and cooling water levels. Now the LR1250 engine is ready to be cranked. For assembly of the crane, activate the assembly self-lock function on the X23 control panel in order to be able to work outside of the valid load chart. Furthermore, Assembly functions must be pre-selected so that all assembly functions and cylinders can be used. The assembly mode wrench symbol on the monitor indicates the relevant mode. Before the main boom A-frame, sometimes also called main boom mast, can be moved into position, the basic machine must be supported via its jack-up cylinders for safety reasons. Make sure that the ground conditions are sufficient, firm and level. The outrigger pads for the jack-up cylinders are placed in the useful storage trays on the undercarriage during transportation and operation. Fold out the cylinders from their parking position. In order to activate the cylinders, you first have to operate the safety lever and pre-select the cylinder function on the X23 control panel. Then control is shifted to the jack-up control levers on the undercarriage. Bring the cylinder into the lower pinning position in order to allow for maximum supporting height and then extend the cylinder until contact is made with the ground. Then the main boom A-frame is lowered to the front. For this purpose, the cylinder adjustment function must be pre-selected in the cab and the button Extend A-frame Cylinder on the X23 must be pressed. By actuating the joystick to lower the main boom hoist drum the A-frame is raised up and moved forward. Press the button on the X-12 control in the operator's cab to extend the main boom backstops. Then loosen the tie-downs of the upper carriage. The next step is to raise the crane with the help of the jack-up cylinders. Sometimes extra blocking or matting underneath the outrigger pads is needed to achieve the necessary jack-up height. The alignment of the upper carriage can be checked using the level gauge located on the undercarriage right by the control levers. During this process, ensure that the cylinders are equally extended. When the crane is raised enough, the nine axle can drive away. Now, attach slings to the pendant straps of the main boom A-frame in order to pick the boom foot. The boom foot offers various lifting points. The lifting point used in order to lift the boom foot smoothly and level depends on whether a luffing or auxiliary drum is installed or not. Mount the boom foot on the upper carriage using the hydraulic pins. The pins are controlled via the assembly remote control delivered with the machine 
and connect it to the upper carriage. First of all, switch off the machine and plug in the control unit. Then restart the machine and select Cylinder Functions. Now the remote control can be operated. Secure the boom foot with pins and pin locks. Before removing the remote control, please switch off the machine again. The next step is to connect the electric cable and the hydraulic quick connections of the boom foot with the upper carriage. For this purpose, remove the bypass plug on the upper carriage and bring it into its parking position. Now the pendant straps of the boom foot are connected to the A-frame and the boom foot is lifted. First of all, start the machine, press the buttons, cylinder functions, and activate A-frame cylinders. The A-frame can be controlled with the joystick for the main boom drum. Further assembly is carried out with the help of the self-assembly cylinder on the boom foot. In order to control the cylinder, the button Assembly Cylinder must be pressed on the X23 control panel. A cylinder symbol is displayed on the monitor. The function is then controlled via the joystick for lifting, lowering hoist drum 2. Attach the assembly rigging delivered with the machine on the assembly cylinder. For crawler side frame assembly, attach the slings on the designated lifting points. The foldable design prevents the crawlers from damaging the assembly rigging. Position the crawler side frame next to the undercarriage. After the crawler has been positioned on the car body wings of the undercarriage, secure it with pins. After both crawler side frames have been mounted, the upper carriage can be lowered. Again, Please make sure that the jack-up cylinders are retracted equally and continuously check the level. Don't forget to pre-select the cylinder function. Then bring the jack-up cylinders into their parking position by further retracting and repinning them. Afterwards, the cylinders can be completely retracted and folded in. Now switch off the machine and remove the lifting chains from the crawler track pads. Then connect the hydraulic lines between the crawlers and the undercarriage via quick connections. Subsequently, the mechanical wedging of the undercarriage is carried out. In the next step, the car body counterweight is mounted. It can be transported under the boom sections to save space. After both car body counterweight slabs have been fixed, mount the platform. For transportation, the attachment beams of the platform on the undercarriage are slid into the car body counterweights. Pull them out and fix them with pins. Make sure that all pin locks are mounted. The next step is the unloading and mounting of the rear counterweight. After the counterweight slabs have been positioned, put the tie-downs in place and secure them with pins. Before starting to assemble the boom, select the planned boom configuration quickly and easily in the Latronic LMI-LML control system. The Liebherr load moment limiter allows continuous online calculation of the load charts. Please use only permitted and specified boom combinations. For possible combinations, Please refer to the operating manual and or load chart book. Now unload and assemble the main boom. One advantage is the compact transportation of the jib sections in the boom sections. Make sure that the boom sections are supported with blocking or matting and not placed directly on the ground. Auxiliary devices, rigging material and tools can be transported and stored in the storage compartments of the car body counterweights in order to save space. Generally, the boom sections are always assembled in the same way. Here, this process is shown on the basis of boom head assembly. Position the boom head and pin the boom on the top boom connection lugs. 
The double tapered pins are delivered with the machine and stored on the boom sections. Ensure that the boom connection lugs are greased appropriately and always secure the pins with the washers and spring cotter pins delivered with the machine. Subsequently, attach the slings of the assembly cylinder on the upper pins and lift the boom until the lower boom connection lugs are aligned. Mount the lower pins and secure them. Depending on the boom configuration and if required, mount the rope guide and the midpoint suspension according to the operating manual. Then, connect the pendant straps. These are stored on the jib and boom sections during transportation in order to save space and speed up the assembly process. Subsequently, unload and assemble the jib. When lifting the jib foot, please use suitable edge protection. For easier handling when mounting the luffing jib on the main boom, first connect the jib foot with the boom head. Now, connect the various jib sections with the jib head using pins, and then connect the pendant straps. The assembly work using the cylinder is now completed, and the rigging can be removed and the cylinder tied to the boom foot. Then, assemble the rear counterweight. Position the basic machine in front of the counterweight. The rear view camera helps you to have a better overview. The rear counterweight cylinder is again controlled via the remote control delivered with the machine. Switch off the machine and connect the remote control to the socket in the upper carriage. Restart the machine and select the cylinder function in order to control the cylinders via the control unit. The cylinders should already be in the lowest position. Connect the chains to the rear counterweight using pins. When lifting the counterweight, ensure it is in a horizontal position. Secure the rear counterweight with pins and actuate the mechanical locking device. Then lower the counterweight assembly cylinders again completely. Before removing the remote control, switch off the machine. Store the remote control in the designated tray. Now, position the basic machine in front of the main boom and connect the boom foot with the first boom section using pins. Disconnect the pendant straps of the A-frame from the boom foot and connect them to the pendant straps of the main boom. Then connect the backstay straps of the jib with the boom foot. Now remove the electric plug in the boom foot and pull the electric cable to the boom head. First, make sure that the machine is switched on. Connect and secure the electric cable on the boom head and in the boom foot. Remove the bypass plug on the boom head and connect the electric cable between boom head and jib foot. With the help of the rope reeving, winch the hoist rope of drum one is led to the boom head and attached to the sling of the luffing A-frame two using the rope socket. The rope reeving winch hoisting function is controlled from the right control panel X11 in the cabin. The cylinder function must be pre-selected for this purpose. For unwinding the reeving rope, the freewheeling function can be activated via the winch clutch. Remove all rope protections from the luffing jib foot and A-frames. Now, pull the rope of the jib luffing winch to the jib foot with the help of the rope reeving winch and connect it to the blue nylon rope which is reeved between the luffing masts, A-frame 2 and 3. Subsequently, connect the rope of the rope reeving winch with the other side of the blue nylon rope and pull it through until the jib luffing winch is completely reeved and can be attached to the dead end lug. Then the rope protection can be mounted on the jib foot. 
Before erecting the luffing A-frames, please make sure that the hydraulic accumulator has enough pressure for the hydraulic backstops of the luffing jib. The set pressure, depending on the outside temperature, is indicated on a label. Then, erect the A-frames with the help of the Drum 1 hoist rope and secure the hydraulic jib backstops using pins. Now, the A-frames can be further erected and simultaneously, the A-frames 2 and 3 distance from each other. Thereby, it is important to make sure that the hydraulic jib backstop cylinders are not retracted all the way. Secure the backstay straps of the luffing jib. Then detach the drum one hoist rope and break the connection between the main rope and the sling of A-frame 2. Now, bring A-frames 2 and 3 together. It is again important to make sure that the hydraulic jib backstop cylinders are not retracted all the way. Then, disconnect the pendant straps, which are pinned on A-frame 3 from their parking position. Distance A-frame 2 and 3 from each other to such an extent that the pendant straps of the A-frame can be connected to the jib foot using slings and shackles. Now, the main boom with the jib foot can be lifted and the basic machine can travel to the jib which has already been prepared. Connect the jib foot with the jib using pins. Then the jib pendant straps can be connected to the pendant straps on A-frame 3. In accordance with the operating manual, mount the midpoint suspension if required. Pull the electric cable to the jib head. Connect and secure the plug. Mount the anemometer and if required, the FAA warning light on the main boom and luffing jib head and connect the cable. Remove the rope protection and pull the main rope to the jib head with the help of the rope reeving winch. Reeve the main rope via the boom head. Once again, check the boom configuration set in the electronic control system and make sure that it matches the actually mounted boom configuration. The system allows work with all equipment configurations without changing the software. The Liebherr Load Moment Limiter allows online load chart calculation. Make sure that the boom is free of loose parts. Make sure once again that all anti-two block and limit switches work properly. And all spring cotter pins are mounted. The boom can now be erected. As long as the boom is beyond the normal working radius, make sure that the jib head remains on the ground and the pendant straps are taut when the boom is lifted. The running rollers on the jib head facilitate the erecting process. Please refer to the operating manual for the ideal boom position depending on the boom configuration. Now, mount the rope protection on the jib head again. If required, reeve the hook. For the various reeving possibilities, please refer to the operating manual. Connect the rope socket to the dead end lug. Thanks to the innovative rope socket, assembly and disassembly of the rope can be carried out quickly and easily. Then mount the anti-two block switches, trigger it manually and check its function. Erect the jib. As soon as the boom enters the active load chart, the hook can be lifted. For safety reasons, the assembly self-lock function is automatically deactivated as soon as a valid load chart is reached. Switch off the assembly functions and the symbol will disappear from the monitor. The LR-1250 is now ready for operation.